Imagine standing barefoot on the ancient soils of East Africa, the wind brushing past tall grass that's been dancing under the sun for millions of years. Around you, strange creatures roam, massive predators, towering herbivores, and in the midst of it all, a peculiar figure crouches over a stone. It's not quite human, not yet, but it's close. This is where our story begins, not with us, but with dozens of human-like species, all trying to survive, adapt, and outlast each other in a brutal prehistoric world. And here's the part most people never hear. For most of history, we weren't alone. We shared this earth with others. They looked like us. Some even thought like us. And yet today, we're the only ones left. Why? What happened to the rest of our ancient family tree? Before we unravel that mystery, make sure to subscribe to Prehistoric Medievals if you haven't already. This journey through time is just getting started. Let's rewind the clock 2.8 million years. In the rugged landscapes of East Africa, a jawbone is unearthed, a fossil that blurs the line between ape and human. It belonged to what we now recognize as the earliest member of our genus, Homo. From this humble beginning, the first humans emerged, Homo habilis. Small, vulnerable, standing no taller than a child, yet with brains 40% larger than their predecessors. It's here that something magical begins, innovation. Picture them by riverbanks, carefully shaping stones into sharp-edged tools. These weren't weapons of war, but tools of survival. Choppers to slice meat, smash bones, or crack open tough shells. These early humans didn't dominate the land, they endured it. And in doing so, they planted the seed of something extraordinary. The human capacity to shape the environment instead of being shaped by it. But Homo habilis wasn't alone. Around the same time, another species walked the same soil, Homo rudolfensis. Larger, stronger, with brains slightly bigger and faces flatter. Were they competitors, cousins, or just a variation of the same lineage? Scientists still debate. They left behind few tools and their legacy is shrouded in mystery. Yet their existence reveals something critical. Evolution isn't a ladder, it's a tree and not every branch climbs higher. Some branch off into shadows, forgotten but essential to the shape of the whole. Subscribe to Prehistoric Medievals now to stay with us as we continue deeper into this story, because the best is yet to come. About two million years ago, something changed. Homo ergaster entered the scene. These weren't just tool makers, they were explorers. With long legs built for endurance and brains nearing 850 cubic centimeters, they took their tools to the next level. They crafted hand axes with elegant precision, chipped stone tools shaped like teardrops. These weren't just for cutting, they represented planning, foresight, and a leap in cognitive ability. Imagine them walking along river corridors under the African sun, flaking stone by firelight, preparing for hunts that would feed their band for days. Though fire wasn't yet mastered, their tools were already shaping their destiny. Many researchers group Ergaster with Homo erectus, and for good reason. Erectus would take these skills global. By 1.8 million years ago, they had spread from Africa to the far reaches of Eurasia, navigating dense forests, frozen plains, and even remote islands. They were the first true pioneers, and with them came fire, controlled fire around one million years ago. It changed everything. Warmth, cooked food, protection, and most importantly, community. Around flames, these early humans began to live, plan, and bond. Their brains ranged from 600 to over 1,200 cubic centimeters. Their bodies adapted to climates as diverse as Georgian highlands and Indonesian jungles. They crafted spears, wore hides, and may have even carved early art into shells. Imagine what that means. A million years ago, humans gathered by firelight under foreign skies, 
telling stories without words, planning hunts and sharing food. Their survival wasn't brute force, it was cooperation. It was adaptability. Qualities that still define us. If this journey through our ancient past fascinates you, don't forget to subscribe to Prehistoric Medievals. We're just scratching the surface. But not all paths led forward. In the deep forests of Western Europe, another figure appears, Homo Antecessor. With a mix of primitive and modern traits, they roamed 1.2 million years ago, hunting in woodlands and crafting simple tools. Yet, by 800,000 years ago, they were gone, a branch that withered before its potential could unfold. Their disappearance is a reminder that evolution isn't fair, it's harsh. Promising species can vanish without a trace, their stories ending abruptly while others thrive. Still, the world didn't pause. Around 600,000 years ago, Homo heidelbergensis emerged, descendants of Erectus with even larger brains and stronger builds. They hunted with wooden spears, perhaps spoke the first true languages, and passed down knowledge that would one day reach us. Some of them migrated into Europe, giving rise to Neanderthals. Others stayed in Africa and evolved into our direct ancestors. These were the first humans to truly master teamwork, hunting prey larger and faster than themselves, coordinating movements like modern squads. We'll continue this journey in part two. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. What happened next will change how you see your own reflection. As the icy grip of the Ice Ages tightened, the stage was set for some of the most remarkable human species to emerge. In Africa, Homo rhodesiensis, now often called Homo bodoensis, began to appear around 300,000 years ago. They weren't just surviving, they were adapting with a level of sophistication rarely seen before. These early humans started hafting, tying stone tips onto wooden shafts to create more lethal hunting weapons. It was a leap in innovation showing not just physical dexterity, but also abstract planning. These are the people from whom we, Homo sapiens, would eventually descend. With high foreheads, rounded skulls, and increasingly complex behaviors, they paved the way for what would soon become the most transformative moment in human evolution. And right around the same time, across Europe's cold mountains and damp caves, the Neanderthals began to rise. Muscular, stocky, and built to endure glacial climates, they weren't the primitive cavemen many still imagine. Their brains were even larger than ours on average, around 1,450 cubic centimeters. They developed advanced stone tools known as the Mousterian Toolkit created art using pigments, and even buried their dead with care. In some caves, skeletons of injured Neanderthals show signs of healing, proof that their communities took care of the weak, the old, the wounded. They lived in complex societies, hunted large game with strategy, and survived in some of the harshest environments on Earth. To call them anything less than human is to deny them the legacy they earned. And guess what? They weren't alone either. In the cold mountains of Siberia and across the highlands of Asia, another species quietly coexisted, Denisovans. We know them mostly through DNA extracted from fragments of teeth and bones found in caves like Denisova. Though rarely represented in the fossil record, their genes live on today in people from Melanesia and Southeast Asia. Their presence reminds us how wide and rich the web of human history really was. At the same time, another intriguing species left behind a mystery in China, Homo longi, the so-called Dragon Man. With a massive skull and brain comparable to Neanderthals, some believe he could be part of this Denisovan story, a deeply rooted branch that once roamed Asia's river valleys and mountainous forests. Subscribe to Prehistoric Medievals now if you haven't yet, because you won't want to miss where we go next. And let's head back to Africa one more time. 
around 300,000 years ago, a new kind of human began to emerge, Homo sapiens. Anatomically modern, with slimmer bodies, lighter bones, and brains built not just for memory, but for meaning. These early humans were different, not just in shape, but in how they thought. They created symbols, carved objects, painted caves, and perhaps even told stories around the fire. Their societies were rooted in cooperation and communication, not just brute strength. And it's here that the shift becomes clear. For the first time, human success wasn't about muscle, it was about mind. But even in this modern moment, we weren't alone. In the rising star cave system of South Africa, a small-brained species called Homo naledi left behind one of the most puzzling archaeological discoveries ever made. They had brains no bigger than a chimp's, around 500 cubic centimeters, but their skeletons were surprisingly modern. They walked upright, climbed with agility, and may have intentionally placed their dead deep within the cave, a behavior that hints at ritual. Think about that. A species with tiny brains practicing what looks like burial. It challenges every assumption we've ever made about intelligence and humanity. It proves that adaptation didn't always mean bigger brains. It meant fitting perfectly into a niche, no matter how strange. Farther east, on the island of Flores in Indonesia, another astonishing tale was unfolding. Homo floriensis, affectionately nicknamed the hobbits, stood barely a meter tall, yet they hunted pygmy elephants and used stone tools with incredible efficiency. They likely descended from Homo erectus, trapped by rising seas on a shrinking island, gradually evolving into their dwarf form through a process called insular dwarfism. Despite their size, they survived for hundreds of thousands of years, only disappearing around 50,000 years ago. And nearby, on the island of Luzon, Homo luzonensis told a similar story. A tiny, tree-dwelling hominin using cruel tools to butcher rhinoceroses, another isolated population making the most of a unique environment. All of this paints a stunning picture. Around 300,000 years ago, Earth wasn't home to just one human species. There were at least seven, possibly more, sharing the planet at the same time. Some were giants, others were tiny. Some wielded fire, others survived in caves. And yet, each one represents a different answer to the same question. How do you live, thrive, and adapt in a world that never stops changing? If you're fascinated by these stories and the fact that we are the only ones left, make sure to hit subscribe, because at Prehistoric Medievals, we dig deep into the past to help you understand your present. Eventually, one species outlasted all the others. Homo sapiens spread across continents, meeting Neanderthals, Denisovans, and others along the way. Some we absorbed, others faded into extinction. But their genes remain, whispering through our bloodlines, reminding us that we are not just the product of survival. We are the legacy of a thousand ancestors who once stood where we now stand. From Homo habilis's crude tools to Homo sapiens cave paintings, from the hobbits of Flores to the giants of Siberia, this has always been a shared journey. The truth is, we didn't rise because we were the strongest. We rose because we were flexible, social, and curious. And in today's rapidly changing world, those same traits matter more than ever. So as the last surviving branch of this vast family tree, let's not forget where we came from. Let's embrace that legacy of resilience, cooperation, and innovation. Because to understand who we are, we must never stop exploring where we began. Drop a comment and tell us what species from this human odyssey fascinates you the most. And until next time, keep exploring the past to shape the future.